my job is just to introduce two wonderful people, Andre and Lydia Forster. I've met them in 2005, back then when I was a Remax agent in Brackenfell. They joined our team in Brackenfell in 2005. That's a long, long time ago. And we worked together as agents. I later became the office manager and then the principal. When I bought shares in the company, I became the principal. So we've traveled a long journey and a very successful couple. They've been successful back then. They are now even more successful with the EXP model now. They've got Andre and Lydia. He is a BCom graduate, manage, uh, BCom accounts management. And Lydia is a... She has a degree in personnel management, so now no wonder their business is very organized and structured, you know. So Andre and Lydia, they came then to find me at EXP. They actually recruited me as their sponsors into EXP. So that's a backstory. So people, put your hands together for my friends Lydia and Andre. It's lovely to be here. Wow, how awesome is this? Been standing on this stage before and there was no one there. And it's just not the same. Much easier. <laughs> Much easier. Okay, so um, I'm Afrikaans, as you would know. And if I uh, start struggling over my words, you know, my English up for the day. So it's a fantastic, it's, it's really for us a privilege just to be here, to be on this stage. And we really hope that our story will help you with no matter where you are in your real estate journey. So let's jump right in. So I come from a small town called Krugersdorp in Gauteng. I grew up in a loving home with mom and dad and younger brother. My dad had his own business, manufacturing all kinds of windows and doors. Still going today, but now my brother is running it. They're all in the audience today. My dad's turning 80 on Monday. <laughs> Say hi. So I'm so happy to have them here. <laughs> Are you done? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, so I grew up on a farm in a, near a very small town um, called Michalisburg. Uh, almost on the border between Gauteng and Northwest Province. Uh, living the farm life, I had a very carefree childhood. I had three older sisters. My mom was a teacher at one of the local schools all her life. My dad, he passed away sadly in 2002, but he was a salaried worker. We did live on a farm, but we were just part-time farmers. He was a salaried worker on the mines all his life. And he always used to say to me, if, if you promise me one thing, do not work for a boss. That stuck. Anyway, eventually I got a degree in accounting, um, never practiced, practiced as, as an accountant, got my degree in 1990, had a couple of businesses of my own since then, the degree came in handy just for running your own business. Uh, late 1990s to early 2002, it was pretty much at the forefront of technology and I had an online business which did fairly well, sold that in 2004 and I was working on a couple of new online projects, just starting to get them formed when Lydia came along and lured me into real estate. Yes, in 2005, I decided I want to go back to work. So I applied for various positions and the Lord opened the door for me into real estate. On my third day, I was very excited to start, but on my third day, I came home, back home and I said to Andre, I'm not doing this on my own. I just looked at the admin and said, no. So we started as husband and wife team. On the third week, third week, much to my, uh, much to my husband's surprise, I walked out, um, just took my back and walked out because I couldn't handle the micromanagement anymore. After three weeks. After three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so then we had time to really look at all the models and look at the different estate agencies. And we chose one that really suited us at that stage. And we've been with, we were with them for 15 years. 
got a higher split on commission, but with a desk fee. Yes, so we, we actually spent 15 years working under the Remax umbrella. Uh, it worked for us, really did. We were independent contractors, uh, so that model suited us fine for that time, time period. We were not looking for anything new. Uh, at the start, it was difficult, us both being in real estate. We soon realized that um, with all our eggs in one basket, our family's whole livelihood really dependent on us making an income from real estate. And uh, yeah. speaking of our family, we've got four kids, uh, two boys and two girls. We love them to bits. The three older ones are already out of school. The youngest one is, he's just started high school, 14 years old. Three of them are in the audience today. And uh, the other one will be here on the weekend. He lives up in Pumalanga or Limpopo. Anyway, yes, so we were at Remax for 15 years, and yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't always easy. We had a, a couple of tough times, but we always managed to knuckle down and come through stronger. Uh, where are we now? <laughs> 2020. Ah, right, I'm fast forwarding. Yes. She knows the speech, I don't. <laughs> anyway, fast forward to 2020. We were in a good space, our business was really doing well with Remax. Uh, and early in 2020, I just happened to stumble upon EXP. They weren't in South Africa. There was no talk of them coming to South Africa. But I follow quite a number of sort of prominent and top producing agents in the United States on social media just to sort of keep track of social media trends and things like that. And one by one, I noticed them moving to a company called EXP. These are really top producers, some of them with large teams from different companies. Uh, some of you might even know them from YouTube and all, uh, all that, guys like Carl Whistle and Mike Sherrard and Ricky Carruth. Um, so this intrigued me. I had to look at this model, even though it wasn't in South Africa. They did a bit of research, saw what it offered, and I just knew uh, if they ever do come to South Africa, I'm in. Uh, lo and behold, later 2020, right? Late in 2020, they did come to South Africa. Um, but at that stage, yeah, anyway, I had a bit of a bad mountain biking accident and it took like four months and six operations later before I settled down again. Had a look at the model and had a look at the South African model. I knew again I was in. Uh, up to then, Lydia didn't know anything about this because I'm one of those people I have to look things through properly before I tell Lydia because she's the emotional one. She's just in. <laughs> anyway, so I had to tell Lydia about it still. Yeah, so we had a difficult start to 2021 in and out of hospitals juggling all the balls between hospital visits, looking after the kids, and also working. Because with the old model, you have to work to get paid. So it was, it was, it was rough, and then one morning in April, Andre just looked at me and he said, Lydia, we're moving companies. I said, what? He said, yes, we're moving to EXP. I said, EX what? I've never heard of them before. He said, yes, please watch the model explained and um, please give me your feedback as soon as you can. <laughs> so I watched the model explained and I immediately said, as Andre said, yes, let's go for it. We had, a, we had a verse that confirmed it for us when we prayed about it. And this is the verse that I got that morning. But forget all that. It's nothing compared to what I'm going to do. For I'm about to do something new. See, I've already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. And so we, I said, let's go for it. We had two soul mandate boards still in the ground at that stage. We just swapped them with EXP soul mandate boards. And our business didn't miss a beat. Um, we, we really, the, the collaboration, the support we got, it was something out of this world and we were never used to that. We formed fantastic friendships in this two years and I will never trade it for anything else. Indeed, I mean, that, that's EXP, it's a happy place. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so the last two years, it's actually even less than two years, it's been quite a ride. Um, but at this stage, we're already really, really, really benefiting from all the, all the things that EXP has to offer. Firstly, um, we kept pretty quickly every year, so we end up earning 
of our commission for the majority of the year, and that's great. We've really already got a sizable um, dollar-based asset on the NASDAQ stock exchange. You've heard a lot about that already. And then revenue share. We, we're already getting a sizable revenue share check, and it's our, definitely our goal, looking at how things are now, that within two years from now, we're going to be financially free. Definitely. We have a revenue share group. <laughs> Thanks. Our revenue share group is 106 agents strong. We've personally introduced 18 agents into the business. They've introduced more agents, and they've introduced more agents. Of course, we're very lucky uh, to have good colleagues and friends, Lisner and Daniel, in our organization, and obviously they contribute greatly to the growth of our organization. But it's just amazing. What's next? <laughs> Anyway, if you would allow me, I've got it. If you would allow me to lose a little bit of bragging. Now, Lydia really didn't want me to do this. She still doesn't, but I've got the clicker. Uh, very proud to say that I think we are a little part of EXP's history. Um, Lydia eventually was EXP South Africa's first ever capping agent. <laughs> And during our second year, she was South Africa's first ever agent to cap a second time around. <laughs> and then something makes me very, very proud. Last year, she was nominated and voted as EXP South Africa's Agent of the Year. <laughs> Definitely no small feat when you think about it. That at that stage, EXP was already almost 800 agents. But Lydia, you deserve it. You've got such a giving heart. Everybody knows that. You just deserve the recognition. Yeah, um, I, if I can say one thing that EXP, they changed a lot. It's a mindset change. But the one thing is I always said, I will never allow my kids to go into real estate. And EXP changed that view for me. So I am very happy to say one of our daughters, Shanae, she's joined a couple of months ago, and she's also now part of the team. That really was a 360 turnaround. Anyway, just sort of back to our real estate journey. Along the way, we learned a lot of lessons that maybe the hard way, and we would have loved to have learned them earlier. Uh, well, first thing we realized pretty, pretty early on is that we figured that to be successful in real estate, you really got to cultivate long-lasting relationships, um, and you've got to have a good lead generation system, especially to generate seller leads in our South African market. You need houses to sell. But how do you do that? It's very, it's very confusing at start, and there's so many options. Um, so here's a couple of things we learned. Firstly, time management. Yeah, you have to block off time for yourself. We chose Sundays. That works well for our family. Uh, you have to have a to-do list. A weekly and a daily to-do list and stick to it and the other thing is yeah you do your first things first in the morning your personal stuff you do your exercise and you do your Bible study and everything must be finished by the start of the business day yeah second thing lead generation strategy you need a good lead generation strategy but you guys are all agents you know how confusing that can be. I mean, where do you start and where do you stop? How do you generate leads? There's so many options. We made a lot of mistakes early on. Uh, obviously, the obvious thing people tell us is you must cold call and door knock. Uh, and that's a very good strategy, and, and many people are very successful at that. It didn't work for us. We just couldn't do it because we don't like door knocking ourselves on our door. And me, I mean, my phone rings, and I answer it because I feel I have to, and then you go, uh, hello, is that Mr. Andre Vosta? Yeah. And you, no, you've just wasted your time on a call. So anyway, uh, a lot of people are very successful at that, but we wasted a lot of time because we were just sort of dragging it out. We didn't really want to do this. Eventually, we did figure out that there's other ways of lead generation, and you need to find your specific sort of niche and focus on that. Um, so what we figured out, I mean, Lydia is a people's person. She's just a warm person, so she needed to get out there. Just get out there, connect with people, form relationships with an existing sphere of influence, uh, new people we meet at school through our kids, buyers who will eventually become sellers as well, and so forth. I started concentrating more on what Armstrong, more sort of the digital side of things. So any relationships she formed, I would sort of 
plug into the other parts of our business to reinforce the relationship and take it forward. Things like a database and CRM and monthly newsletters, engaging with them on social media and that type of thing. So that way we sort of keep people top of mind. She starts the relationship, I carry it forward. So the main thing is you've got to focus on what works for you. Then, don't compare yourself to others. This is very important. Lydia was very quick always to compare to others. The problem is you see people and they're successful and you go look what they do and you think, ah, now I've got to do that. But you don't realize that that's possibly their strong point and the other things they, they don't do or don't do well. I mean, you might see somebody successful, you think, okay, how is he doing this? Where is he getting his sellers? And he's dancing on TikTok. Doesn't mean you've got to do that. If it works for you, great. But no, you've got to find your own, your, sort of your own strong points. So I think this, this sort of sums it up. You've got to focus on your strengths. Put in the effort consistently, and you will achieve results. Oh, I'm only realizing now how much of the speech Lydia gave to me. <laughs> anyway, going forward, we were chatting about this recently. Going forward, we believe we're going into a tougher market. Nothing we can do about that. Those are the cards that we've dealt, and we've got to play them. Um, but we have strategized about how we will get through it, especially based on our experience sort of 28 to 2010, which is very similar. I'm just going to run through that. I mean, yes, you've got to look at your budget if necessary. Cut expenses, cut unnecessary expenses. Uh, you need to really have good, re sort of cultivate good relationships with other agents in your industry, not just the same company, just colleagues in general. You will find that during a tough market, we need each other, we really do need each other. Uh, apart from that, even if you've got good relationships with agents, if they're going to exit the business at any stage, you can speak to them and get them to, in future, they will get uh, leads back from previous clients and they can give that to you on a referral basis. Then double up on your lead gen strategies, which you just decided, so just do it twice as hard. Uh, make sure you stay top of mind with your customers any way you can. Phone them, WhatsApp them, engage on social media, do whatever. Expand your farming area if necessary. If you're in a small farming area, there's only so many houses selling every year. If it's a tough market, half the amount of houses are selling. You've got your market share. Suddenly, your income is halving. Maybe just think of expanding your farming area. Maximize commission. Uh, I want to just jump in here with a very funny story. Early on in our, in our, uh, <laughs> early on in our, our days as real estate agents, uh, firstly, Lydia fired me as a buyer's agent very quickly. We used to go on buyer's appointments together. No way. She fired me very quickly because uh, if a buyer's late, I mean, that's it for me. That's my face, and I'm not pleased, and, it, and they can see it. But then, uh, speaking of maximizing commission, Lydia, of course, when we go to present an offer to a seller, sometimes I would present, didn't go to badly. Lydia would present, she would say, hey, Mr. Seller, here's an offer for so much. Our commission is this. You're getting that in your pocket. Half a second of an awkward silence. What does Lydia do? But on the other hand, we know you need more. We can cut our commission. <laughs> she did this a couple of times, and eventually one time I said to her, Lydia, we, you can't keep doing that. You're just giving away our commission, and we really need it. Uh, anyway, uh, on that point, um, she, she actually said to me, but we will reap what we sow. And I said, I think we should be, be reaping now what we sowed last time. Anyway, that's it. So yeah, concentrate on your industry partnerships. Embrace technology and AI. Look into that. It can make your life simpler and make you more productive. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brent, awesome. Jean, everybody. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Rory. We're looking forward to it. You're a special person, Steve. <laughs>